All right, guys, welcome and gals, welcome back to Science for Trimester 2. Um, it's crazy to think that we're already back here. Um, but one of the things that we are going to do that's going to be a little bit different than how we did it in um, Trimester 1 is instead of having a textbook, we are going to be basing our lessons off of slideshows. And the way this unit goes, um, originally this was a unit that was really hands-on and really group-based. And so we're trying to figure out a way on how we could get this information to you guys. Um, and so one of the ways we came up with is a PowerPoint slide. And traditionally, when we would do these lessons, we would end up doing them and we'd have a couple of like what we know as straight lecture days. Um, we don't have a ton of those in science. But the information that you're going to be getting over kind of this first week in trimester two is a lot of the stuff that we are going to be basing um, our projects and our understanding off of. So there is going to be a lot of time spent taking notes this first couple of days. Um, and what we want to do is we want to have videos that go along with the notes. So it is going to be like you're in a lecture. So it is important that you guys watch all of these videos. And I want to show you what this is going to kind of look like and when you should be taking notes. Because hopefully you should have watched the how do we take notes video that is above in your document. Um, but as we go through, I want to kind of walk you through just the document in a second for this portion. Um, and as we do that, you're going to see that I kind of disappear. See, look, I'm no longer here. But on your lesson, this is not going to be um, green. This is not going to be red. This just is right now telling me that I currently need to go back and, and fill this information in. Okay, so the stuff will change, but it is there. So right here where you see something red, this is going to be this lecture. And right now you are currently watching this Atomic Structure Lecture Part 1. Okay. So here is your introduction. There's your vocabulary journal setup. Here is the slideshow. You should have the slideshow up as well. That way you can slow down and open this up and take notes as you go. One thing that we did talk about during the um, vocabulary journal setup is when to take notes. Normally in class, I would kind of pause and I would say, all right, turn your notebooks and fill it out. What we're going to do is in this video, when I stop and say, take notes, I'm going to leave like five or six seconds. During that time, you are going to pause this video. And when you pause the video, you are going to take your notes. You will then push play again, and then after a few seconds, I will start talking. Okay, if you try to take notes as I'm talking, you are going to get really far behind. Okay, this is not going to be a quick part of our lesson. Okay, we do have this entire um, Google slideshow that is broken down into, I think, five different mini lectures that would typically make up our full lecture. And as we've said before, guys, this is something that normally would take two days of normal class of just the note taking and stuff like that. So that's why this is broken down. That's why we're slowing down. We're asking questions in between. Okay. So as we go through each section, you are going to see that there is a atomic structure lesson part one. You're going to pause when I say take notes. You are going to then answer some questions. Okay. Make sure you do not answer the questions where it says answer. You answer underneath. Right here is the first thing. You're going to draw some things in your notebook. You're going to take a photo. You are then going to look at this diagram and you're going to figure out which one is appropriate. So then you're going to write your answer down here. When you're done with that, you are going to watch the second part and we'll go on from there. Okay, it's very similar to how you saw it in the vocabulary journal setup, but I do want, I wanted to show you that again, okay? The other thing that I'm going to be doing kind of throughout these lectures is I may be coming over here to, to paint. And you guys know me well enough to know that my drawing skills are not perfect. They are definitely not going to be perfect when I'm on here. Bear along with me. It's the best I have, and the hard part is I can't just draw in here. Um, besides my mouse. So this is about as good of a circle as you're going to get. You're going to get some dots. All right. So all of that is kind of how we do things. You may see some stuff that looks like this. I can write words. Isn't that lovely? All right. And so 
kind of bear with me. Don't hate me when that goes through. All right. Um, let's see if I can just, let's create a new one. We're not going to save. So there we go. All right. So that is, in general, how we are going to kind of rock this this year. All right. So without further ado, let's actually jump into Atomic Structure Lecture Part 1. Eventually, hey, look at that. There I am. All right, so I am going to go into full present mode. And when I go into full present mode, you guys are going to actually see me and go from there. All right. Still here. Still scary. All right. So what we're doing is we're jumping into a atomic structure. Earlier in the lesson, it asked you to kind of predict what you know about atoms. And we are going to start talking about the atoms. And eventually, throughout the course of this unit, we are really going to talk about one very specific part of the atom, the electron, and what the electron does, okay? So as we are going through, remember that you guys are going to be taking notes to this. So one of the first things I want you guys to do, and I'm going to pause here in a second, is I want you to write on the top of your page, atomic structures. This is going to be where we're going to be talking about atomic structures. So here we're going to practice the first time. I am going to say, take notes. Pause the video right now. All right. That was about six seconds of me pausing. So you should have had time to write atomic structure. And look at this. I can do this fancy little thing right here. Okay. Right here, you guys are going to see this is a diagram of an atom. This also is a diagram of an atom. This is the Project Lead the Way symbol. This is the one that you guys probably see the most. Okay. This is known as a three dimensional atom. Okay. So as we go through, and I'm just going to click this way you are going to see that we have two different types. We have a three-dimensional atom, and we have a two-dimensional atom. Okay, isn't that a cool transition? Same atom, just different view. So in your notes, one of the first things that I want you to do is I want you to write this word up here, and you guys are going to notice in our notes, anytime that there's a header here, you guys are going to write this down. So we want you to write electrons, and then underneath it, here are models of atoms. And if you watch the video that I had about the, um, the vocabulary setup, you're going to see in one spot I had a two-dimensional model and a three-dimensional model. So in your three-dimensional model, I want you to try to draw this. Again, I know it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be wonderful. But if you have different colors, it might be smart to have... Um, certain ones that are blue, certain circles that are blue, certain circles that are red, certain circles that are green. That's why you have your colored pencils. And you're just kind of drawing these little loops, okay? This is a three-dimensional model, and like I said, this is one that you see. The other version is going to be what we know as the Bohr's model, the two-dimensional model. And this is the one that we are going to be using in class. So again, you're going to have red circles, you're going to have blue circles, but in this case, you're just going to have circles that go around these circles in the middle, okay? We are going to learn about what this is later. So at this point, you should pause the video. You should, um, actually, I'll tell you to take notes in just a second. Um, when I get done talking, you should pause the video. You should also have this PowerPoint up so you can click through and look at it yourself because you're not going to be able to um, kind of uh, stop me at any time unless you decide you want to, you know, go back in the video. So I'm going to ask you to take notes. You're going to draw a two-dimensional model and a three-dimensional model of an atom. All right. So take notes. Okay, so you should have paused the video, and you should now have your 2D model and your 3D model. We're going to move on. So one of the things that we're going to talk about is an element. Oop. Okay, is an element. So right now, again, I want you to write the word elements down. And what an element is, it is the simplest form of matter, meaning it's the most basic. And the thing that's interesting is that when we start talking about atoms, atoms are the same in an element. So when we have an element, and we're going to talk about what that means in the periodic table, 
Everything inside that element is made up of the exact same atoms over and over and over again. Okay? So if you have the element oxygen, okay, it's made up of complete oxygen atoms. If you have the element carbon, it's made up of completely of carbon atoms. Okay? So everything is just made up of a bunch of it. Okay? That's basically like saying ice cream is made up of a whole bunch of mini ice creams. Okay, I know that's not exactly true, but you get what I'm getting at from there. Again, pause the video. So take notes. You guys are just going to get sick of me counting on my hand. Okay, so we should be back and we are ready for our next set of notes. All right, so now we're going to dive into what is an atom. So this is something that you'll typically see. And one of the things that um, I like to do, if any of you have watched Big Bang Theory, you kind of see this on their opening slide, um, and it just goes around, 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 around. These different parts are literally what we're going to be learning about next. And I don't want to kind of share that. You might have an idea based on what you already know. So if you have a second, kind of take a guess of what these different parts are. What are the blue circles? What are the yellow circles? These are also yellow circles. They should be a different color. But they're revolving around this giant thing in the middle. That means something. So again, you're going to take notes on right here. What is an atom? An atom, by definition, is the smallest piece of an element that contains all properties of that element. So it's exactly what we said before, that an element is made up of basically smaller versions of that element. And by that is atoms make up elements. Okay? It's the same thing. It has the same properties as the whole element. Okay? So pause. Take notes. And I'm sure my facial expressions are just downright wonderful. All right. Next slide. So this is where we're going to do it. So what are some of the components of an atom? So I want you to write components of an atom. And then underneath that, we are going to start to kind of lay things out. I'm going to put them all up here and we're going to talk about them. So the first thing that we have is something called a nucleus. And last year when we were talking about cells, we mentioned this idea of nucleus in the past. It's kind of the center of something. In this case, it's the center of an atom. Okay. So the nucleus is the center portion of an atom that contains protons and neutrons. So right here is known as our nucleus. It's really dense. If we think back to what we learned in trimester one, dense means how tightly packed our particles are together. And in this case, it contains our protons and our neutrons. Okay. So first off, what is a proton? A proton is one of these red circles right here, and it is what we know as a positively charged particle. So at the end of this, when you write protons and you write your definition of positively charged protons, I want you to draw a plus symbol here because that is going to play an important role. That means that they are positively charged. And that's going to mean something in about a slide or two when we start talking about something that's negatively charged. Okay. And when we start talking about positively and negatively charged things, I want you to have in the back of your head a magnet. You guys all know how magnets work, where you have a positive side and a negative side. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. All right. So like I said, I was going to show you, you know, kind of positively and negatively charged. So over here, you see I have two magnets, right? What do we know about magnets? And this is interesting that, you know, something like a, a one, two-year-old actually understands that. When you put a magnet together, sometimes they click together and they hold together. Other times when you put magnets together, they don't and they jump off. Okay. In your head, you're like, well, duh, Mr. Eddie, we already kind of know that, okay? So why is that? We know that positive and negatively charged or magnetic field things are attracted to each other, so it means they stick together. We know that like charges, meaning positive and positive, repel each other, okay? The example I always go is when you're talking in life, you know, if you're trying to date someone, usually opposites attract. They make that statement because if they're the if you are the exact same as the person you're attracted to, guess what? You probably aren't going to get along very well because you're going to be basically trying to date yourself. Okay, so there's a reason why when they say opposites attract, there's usually some truth behind that. Okay, so as we start talking about that, I want you to think about magnets. So if you have magnets as you're going on. Um, it wouldn't be the worst thing to kind of be playing with them or kind of looking at them as we go through this lesson. All right, so, so far we've covered our nucleus, which right here is the center portion of the atom, 
contains the protons, which are the red ones, the neutrons, which are the blue ones. We talked about the protons. These are your positively charged atomic particles. And we say atomic particles, we literally just mean something that's part of the atom. Our neutron, we think of this way, neutron, neutral. Neutral means really kind of in the middle. So when we say neutron, we are saying an uncharged atomic particle, meaning there is no charge. So after here, I want you to write the words no charge. Protons, we should have a plus sign. Here, we should have no charge. All right, I'm going to give you a second to take notes. So here's me telling you to take notes. All right. We're back. We still have our magnets. We're rolling. We're ready to move on. So now we have, eventually, we have the second part of our things, okay? We have these things that are green that are called electrons. And one of the things that I told you earlier is that when we start talking about electrons, it's going to be one of the more important things that's going to happen. So an electron are these little green circles that are traveling around the nucleus. And an electron is a negatively charged atomic particle. So again, I want you to put a negative sign here. And we are going to talk about what this means in just a minute. So again, let's recap. We have the nucleus, which is in the center of the atom. We have our protons, which are positively charged. We have our neutrons, which are no charged. We have our electrons, which are negatively charged. So if we have something in the center that's positively charged, something in the that's kind of going around it that is negatively charged, they are going to be attracted to each other. And because they're attracted to each other, it means that they stick together, okay? Which is why we have electrons that travel around the nucleus, okay? Then we have this thing right here. We have something called a valence electron, and we're going to be diving into these a little bit later, but you can still write these notes ahead of time. It is an electron that lives on the outside of the orbital, okay? And I'm going to show you what that is in a little bit. Don't kind of freak out over that right now. Let's just kind of write that in. What is an orbital? It's the rings in which the electrons live in. So these black lines right here are what we know as orbitals. The electrons will flow in a or move in a particular kind. And there's actually four types of orbitals in which an electron can move or four different directions or shapes that an electron can move. Okay. So again, I want you to take notes. My hand counting, wonderful. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys this video. And I'm going to be quiet if it does not come through clear. What I want you to do is pause the video. In your um, document that you pulled up, I want you to watch it on your own. One of the things that would be really beneficial is as you're doing this, I want you to actually um, take notes. So like something you find interesting, I want you to take notes in your notebook. Okay. So I'm going to... Um, pause the video or put myself off so you can't see me, but then I'm going to play the video. You probably already know that everything is made up of little tiny things called atoms. You might even know that each atom is made up of even smaller particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. And you've probably heard that atoms are small. But I'll bet you haven't ever thought about how small atoms really are. Well, the answer is that they are really, really, really small. So, so you ask, just how small are atoms? Well, to understand this, let's ask this question. How many atoms are in a grapefruit? Well, let's assume that the grapefruit is made up of only nitrogen atoms, which isn't at all true, but there are nitrogen atoms in a grapefruit. Well, to help you visualize this, let's blow up each of the atoms to the size of a blueberry. And then how big would the grapefruit have to be? It would have to be the same size of, well, actually, the Earth. That's crazy. You mean to say that if I filled the Earth with blueberries, I would have the same number of nitrogen atoms as a grapefruit? That's right. So how big's the atom? That's really, 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 really small. And you know what? It gets even more crazy. 
Let's now look inside of each atom. That's the blueberry, right? What do you see there? In the center of the atom is something called the nucleus, which contains protons and neutrons. And on the outside, you'd see electrons. So how big is the nucleus? Well, if atoms are like blueberries in the Earth, how big would the nucleus be? You might remember the old pictures of the atom from your science class, where you saw this tiny dot on the page with an arrow pointing to the nucleus. Well, those pictures, well, they're not drawn to scale, so they're, they're kind of wrong. So how big is the nucleus? So if you popped open the blueberry and were searching for the nucleus, you know what? It would be invisible. It's too small to see. Okay, let's blow up the atom, the blueberry, to the size of a house. So imagine a ball that is as tall as a two-story house. Let's look for the nucleus in the center of the atom. And you know what? It would just barely be visible. So to get our minds wrapped around how big the nucleus is, we need to blow up the blueberry up to the size of a football stadium. So imagine a ball the size of a football stadium. And right smack dab in the center of the atom, you would find the nucleus. And you could see it. And it would be the size of a small marble. And there's more, if I haven't blown your mind by now. Let's consider the atom some more. It contains protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and neutrons live inside of the nucleus and contain almost all of the mass of the atom. Way on the edge are the electrons. So if an atom is like a ball the size of a football stadium with a nucleus in the center and the electrons on the edge, what is in between the nucleus and the electrons? Surprisingly, the answer is empty space. That's right, empty. Between the nucleus and the electrons, there are vast regions of empty space. Now, technically, there are some electromagnetic fields, but in terms of stuff, matter it is empty. Remember, this vast region of empty space is inside the blueberry, which is inside the earth, which really are the atoms in the grapefruit. Okay, one more thing, if I can even get more bizarre. Since virtually all of the mass of an atom is in the nucleus, and now there is some amount of mass in the electrons, but most of it is in the nucleus, how dense is the nucleus? Well, the answer is crazy. The density of a typical nucleus is 4 times 10 to the 17th kilogram per meter cubed. But that's hard to visualize. Okay, I'll put it in English units. 2.5 times 10 to the 16th pounds per cubic feet. Okay, that's still kind of hard to figure. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Make a box that is one foot by one foot by one foot. And let's go and grab all of the nuclei from a typical car. Now, cars on average weigh two tons. How many cars' nuclei would you have to put into the box to have your one foot box have the same density of a nucleus? Is it one car? Two? How about 100? Nope, nope, and nope. The answer is much bigger. It is 6.2 billion. That is almost equal to the number of people in the Earth. So if everyone on the Earth owned their own car, and they don't, and we put all of those cars into your box, that would be about the density of a nucleus. So I'm saying that if you took every car in the world and put it in your one-foot box, it would have the density of one nucleus. Okay, let's review. The atom is really, really, really small. Think atoms in a grapefruit, like blueberries in the earth. The nucleus is crazy small. Now look inside the blueberry and blow it up to the size of a football stadium, and now the nucleus is a marble in the middle. The atom is made up of vast regions of empty space. That's weird. The nucleus has a crazy high density. I think I'm putting all those cars in your one-foot box. I think I'm tired. Ooh. All right, so I'm coming back in here, and you guys have watched that video. So what we're going to do is this is the end of section one, where we've started talking about the components of an atom, We've talked about the nucleus, the protons, the neutrons, the electrons, and eventually, like I said, we'll talk about valence electrons and the orbital. But as of right now, again, for your review, you need to know what an atom is, the components of an atom. So when we talk about subatomic particles or atomic particles of an atom, you need to be able to tell me there's a nucleus. You need to be able to tell us that there's protons, which are positively charged. There are neutrons, which are no charge or uncharged. There are electrons, that are negatively charged and they move around the nucleus. All right, so that is your end of section one.
have a good one. We will see you for section two.